card Lindsay here the frugal crafter today we're gonna make this very simple sympathy card and I'm gonna give you a chance to win the stamps that I used over on my blog so I want to show you um, about art accents there who the stamps come from they um, came out with a really lovely set of sentiment stamps and what I did because they come unmounted is I had my husband cut some um, scrap wood into little wooden blocks and sand the edges and I just mounted them like that um, because I find them so much better to use for the way that I work to have them on wooden blocks so I just want to share that tip with you. I know I've shared it before, but this may be your first video ever watching. And the other thing that I do when I mount a stamp, I like my sentiments to be mounted. When I mount a stamp, I mount it right down the bottom, right along the edge. So it's right in that corner. So it's really easy for me to position. So I thought I'd just share that little tip with you right now. And then my regular image stamps, I like to keep unmounted and I really enjoy these curved blocks. I have these, this one's by um, Obsession, Impression Obsession, and it was kind of expensive, I have to say. Um, but they also, the company Crafters Companion also makes rock blocks which are awesome too and they're, they're actually a little bit smaller though so I did want this really big 6x6 block for some of my larger backgrounds. So um, I like them both equally but I just needed this, this mount because even the 6x9 you lose a little bit of, of uh, room on the Crafters Companion and it's not quite a full 6 inches. Or maybe it's four by four by six or four by nine. I don't know. But anyway, this this was the only stamp mount that I could get this nice big curved um, curved area. And you're probably wondering why are you using a curved mount, Lindsay? What's the what's the big advantage? Well, the thing is, I don't have any cushion on this stamp. Um, so and my my surface here is not perfect. So by having a curved mount, I can really force that um, rubber down into the paper with an even firm pressure. Okay, and then I get a really great impression. Now I've got a little space here on the bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this and I'm using archival ink because I want to use watercolor markers on top and I don't want it to run. So if you prefer to use Copic markers or any alcohol markers, then um, you'll wanna make sure you use a memento, something that's appropriate for the ink you're using. And so it's really easy for me to position this because I know exactly where my words are gonna come out. All right, and I got a really great um, impression there, but you see with this wood mount, what I did was I just took a little piece of fun foam and I adhered the fun foam um, to the rubber and then adhered the whole thing to the block. That just made it, so I had that little bit of cushion there. All right, so there, we've talked a little bit about, a little bit about stamping. <laughs> oh my goodness, I do feel a little random. I've, it's been a day where it's like, I can't get anything done. I've been puttering around all day, I feel like. All right, so we're gonna do a little coloring. I'm using these three colors of markers. These are the Spectrum Aqua, so they're a watercolor marker, so if you're gonna do this technique. Um, then you're also going to need a blending pen. Uh, this is a Tombow blending pen. Uh, I've got Sunset, which is a kind of a corally orange. I've got Lime and I've got Sea Green. And we're going to start with the Sea Green in the background. And um, I'm going to keep this right here on this. Um, I'm not going to trim it out yet because I like to kind of clean my brush or my brush pen off on the edge there. I got a little little something, a little fuzzy in there. Probably a dog hair or something, who knows? Cat hair, dog hair, random dust. You never can tell. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the background first and I have a little, um, I have like dust. What is that? It's like a fuzzy. Um, hopefully that ink is dry enough. I've been jibber jabbing her enough that it probably ought to be. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add um, some ink into an area that's kind of partitioned off so I don't have to worry about blending everything at once. And then I can go right in with my blender pen while the ink is still wet, and I can blend it around. I'm working on a hot press cardstock. It's not an expensive paper, but um, uh, it's a hot press watercolor paper rather, but it just gives me enough sizing and enough open time that I can do this technique really easily. I'm not gonna fuss about it too much or worry about it too much. Um, if I get a little bit out of the lines or I get a little bit, you know, in a flower, I'm not really gonna worry about it. You, of course, can take your time when you're doing this at home. Um, but, you know, have fun with it. And, and you know, a little mistake, a little bit out of the lines is not the end of the world. So please don't feel like you have to throw it away and start all over if that happens. Now this technique is really easy because it's just kind of like a soft rouging from the outside. You could also add the shadow around the branches, completely up to you. You can uh, add more or less, but since you don't have to worry about getting this huge, even blending, it's really forgiving. I like to work really quickly and work kind of in pieces as I do this, so it's just a little bit easier to blend with these water base markers. And I find them a little bit easier to blend in this sort of situation than an alcohol base marker. 
um, but you know, you use whatever whatever you have. If you're doing this with an alcohol marker, you may wish to use two shades, similar shades of marker, rather than trying to go right with a clear blender and your color, because that would be more difficult to blend. I just went over a flower there, I'm not even gonna worry about it. <laughs> See, this is how, like, this is how I roll, I don't worry about it. Now, you can keep it light in the middle, sometimes it looks nice though, if you add a little bit of shadow around your tree branches, it just gives it a little bit of weight. But see, just go go quickly, have fun with it. I'm gonna just start a little bit in there. So it is a quick process. These, um, I did notice, I did a little comparison with the um, Winsor Newton markers and the Spectrum Aqua markers. And I do see the uh, Winsor Newton markers lift, you can lift longer with the Spectrum Aquas. You wanna kinda go in and lift quickly and I'll show you a little, um, I'll show you a little bit in my art journal. I just was practicing with that today and, uh, and show you what I mean exactly. But just around these flowers, just give it a little bit of color. You don't have to put this much in there. I just think I, I like that color. And plus, since we're going to be using coral, it's really going to make it pop. I'll show you that after. I, let's do all our close-up coloring. Now, to clean off my nib, I'm just going to scribble it off in the corner. That's going to be trimmed away, so I'm not worried about that. Um, we'll do that. I'll show you that. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Now I'm changing something like this first flower. I did the dark color on the e around the outside edge. I didn't like that. I'm going to do it at the bottoms of the petals and fade it in. So I think I'll start maybe just a little bit on a couple petals. I don't want to do too many at once because it's going to, as we know, reds are harder to blend. And this is just going to give it a nice soft look. Kind of just putting color down with the um, tip of the marker and then just blending it with our pen. Um, another thing you could do is actually scribble your marker off onto like a stamp block or a piece of plastic packaging or something and then um, and then just pick up a water brush or a blending pen or a damp paintbrush and use that to blend it. That will work a little bit better, especially if you're using cardstock or something that isn't going to blend quite as well as the uh, watercolor paper. But even though, even with the watercolor paper, I don't want to keep working over an area or it's going to pill. So I did, somebody said they were using the Tim Holtz Distress Marker cardstock, which is supposed to be like a hot press watercolor paper, I think, and they were having problems with it pilling. You still have to use a very gentle touch and not too much water, I think. Um, cold press paper is a little bit more forgiving, but it's harder to stamp on because you have all that texture. I hope I'm not overwhelming you with information. If that's the case, <laughs> you can always put me in fast forward and hit the mute button. I don't mind. I know that sometimes it's just a little too much, Lindsay. That's that's what the mute button's for. That's what somebody made a great a great point. Actually, several people said it. Hey, you know what? That's a, that's what the mute button's for. If anyone's uh, tired of listening to you gab, Lindsay. <laughs> So huh, that's a, that's always an option, um, you know, and you can, of course, take a little more time, but I just wouldn't, if you're taking more time, I would maybe, like, maybe just do one petal and blend it. That's where I would take the more time. I would just not go ahead and do so many at a time because you do want to get in there and blend it smoothly. Um, I, I like working quickly. I don't feel like I'm rushing because this is how I enjoy, I enjoy kind of getting my ideas down. Sometimes it takes me a while to get anything accomplished. Um, but when I'm actually working, when I know what I'm, what I want to do, I, I do work pretty quickly. I like um, also this limited color palette because it reminds me of like, kind of like brochures from the 50s and 60s, how things would have that limited color palette and like, you'd look at and see some like art deco, um, artwork that was kind of Asian inspired and art deco jewelry and it would have that really limited color palette and I, I always loved coral and like that sea green aqua together together I just thought it's a a really beautiful combination and it does kind of have this eastern feeling to it to me you could go in and add another like maybe mossy green if you wanted to I decided to go with a really light lime green because it won't require any blending it's such a light pale color that's one thing I really recommend doing when you um, when you get some markers, uh, especially if it's the first time and you're kind of overwhelmed and um, see, I'm just I'm just putting this lime green. It's so forgiving. I don't really have to worry about about blending it or anything. Um, and if you think about like old offset printing, like you look at old books or old brochures or old flyers, you'll see things kind of off. Like they'll like not everything's gonna fall within the lines just because of the printing process. So I think it kind of helps give you that that kind of uh, look. And you can even fill in some of the lighter spots if you want to with some of this green. Just don't, don't 
fuss it too much. Just have, have fun with it. Um, you can even go over some of the branches if you if you prefer. Okay, so where what were we talking about? Gosh, I was telling you something and I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> Big shocker. All right, we're gonna trim this out and I'm sure I'll think about what I was talking about. Um, and I've just got this little uh, trimmer here. I really like this. This is, you can find them by different companies. Um, this one's fairly old. It's uh, Creative Memories. I like it because I, I can look through the little guide bar here and see that I have a nice like eighth of an inch border there. I could do that on every side. It's a little bit easier than trying to, to guess with my guillotine style cutter. Um, oh yeah, the tip, the tip I was mentioning, oh gee, that's what I was going to tell you about, um, is to swatch out your markers when you first get them. So I don't think I actually got to the part where I was actually sharing the tip. So what I did was, um, I showed you with my Windsor Newton yesterday, I was swatching them out. I, I run out of room whenever I'm on my desk here and I'm working. Let's zoom out a little bit more, baby. There we go. Um, so I just kind of swatched it out, see how they blend and whatnot, and see how they're blending together. And then I was doing my uh, Spectrum uh, Aqua markers today, and I was swatched out six at a time, and then I went to blend them, and I thought, you know what? They're not blending that great. Swatching them, and then, like, even a minute later, they almost stain, and they're hard to blend. So then over here, I would swatch the color, then I'd grab my water brush and blend it out, and then I could see how they blend differently when I go with a blender right right as soon as I color it than if I wait even a couple minutes. So um, kind of getting used to how they blend with a water brush and with a blender pen is very helpful. Um, they do blend out really well if you get to them right after you color them and having the actual color like I thought I'd want um, like the blossom color or begonia for my flowers but then when I saw a sunset like that is a color I want. So you know having them actually colored out um, it will be much more accurate than seeing the colors on the ends of the markers and that's the case with whatever brand you have, even Copics, I swear when you color it out on the paper you're most comfortable using, you're going to get a much better representation than what they reproduce on the plastic caps. Plastic caps are pretty good, they're much better than the paper ones that fade, but they're not going to be perfect. Do it on your paper and see what you get. Okay, so what I have here is a craft card base and um, I'm going to get some layering paper. I've got this whole stack of uh, leftovers that I had from um, from making some envelopes the other day, so I'm just going to choose something. Oh, this is the exact one that I used on the other card, so I think I'll use that. And again, I'll trim it to to fit my card. What I just do is I kind of just make a little a little bend where I want to trim it. And so I'm going to trim that, and I'm also going to die cut this with an oval die. So why don't I pause it, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Let's uh, adhere this down. I had some, uh, I had my uh, my tape gun completely loaded wrong earlier today, and I was like, why isn't this working? I'm having an awful hard time. I bought the uh, cheap tape over at Tape Depot, and I was like, oh no, did I buy bad tape? And I think I just had it loaded wrong. It does seem to be a little, um, like, not flat. The roll doesn't seem to be completely flat, so I'm a little concerned. I hope it, I hope it stays all right. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I have to, I'm used to using some of the Tombow adhesives where you have to kind of pull it sharply to the side. And when I do that, it kind of wants the tape to come off, but you can kind of just peek through the hole there and see how the tape is lifting up from the sides away from my spindle in the middle. Is this supposed to do that? I'm thinking it's all supposed to do that. So, um, so I don't know. I don't know if I should contact them or if I'm a doofus and I've done something wrong or what. But I just got them in and I haven't like stored them in any weird way because I haven't long, had them long enough to store them anyway at all. I'm going to use some foam tape. My goodness, I just headed over here. Okay, in a moment I will. I'll have to go look for it if I don't have it right away. I'm gonna make a little bow to go on here. Gosh, I'm feeling at random again today. Um, so I will have this giveaway of those stamps on my blog. I'll put a link below. Um, it's a frugalcrafter.wordpress.com, um, but if you don't you know, if you don't see a link right below, you want to see what I, you probably didn't even see what I did. My husband made me this bow jig. I just love it, this bow making jig. So I've got these two spindles. You can even take like a like a clothespin, a couple of clothespins, and clip it to the side of a box and do the same exact thing if you want to. But see, I just kind of wrapped it around and tied it. I'm just gonna tie it in a uh, knot here. I'm gonna double knot so that it it lays nice and flat. And then we'll have a little bow. But it's really easy. I kind of do it without thinking about it. And then I'm like, oh, I should probably show you how to use that a little bit better. So anyways, we, we used to sell these online, but my shop was, was kind of acting freaky. So I put it on permanent vacation for the time being because it just was not, 
it was uh it was acting strangely um so i put these in my put those bow makers the last two that i had that i didn't sell in my um in my shop in my real life shop my in a real store and <laughs> not that online stores aren't real it's just uh i don't do well with sitting and listing things not a very i won't be a very good online shop owner i don't think so i got this cute little bow here and i'm going to stick that down there i'm going to put some ribbon right there and i'm going to use my dry adhesive so it doesn't seep through just get a nice long strip of that Ooh, i'm going to drop that adhesive gun on the ground i think i am a mess i've been like puttering around all day you know you ever have those days where it's like okay it's monday i have all these ideas all these things i want to do and then you can't settle down and pick one and then you end up just wasting a big portion of the day just farting around just farting around today that's what i've been doing listening to an audiobook and farting around it was a good audio but i'm listening to uh stephen king's skeleton crew which is a, a selection of short stories i i like it because you know they're, they're kind of creepy i like to be creeped out i don't like things seriously scary uh but i like creepy a little bit of creepiness all right i'm gonna have to go get more adhesive because i think the dog ate it hold on a minute one of these days i'm just gonna find a big pile of adhesive somewhere it's frightening all right I'm gonna put a couple of those little foam squares on the back i swear i go over it and i grab i have like never-ending stash of foam squares i go and get more like every time i i come to work on a project and then where'd the rest of them go i don't know we'll stick that right there i do want to add a little bit of color i think i will do just a little just a little curl of color there and mix it with my blending pen if your blending pen goes dry you can revive it with a little 50 50 mix of glycerin and um and turn that off there um glycerin and water and a little bit of hot glue for my little bow there if you get any hot glue string zap it with a heat gun for a moment and it will go away we'll stick that right on there and Bob's your uncle. We are done. Make sure you go check out my blog for a chance to win this. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like stamp giveaways. I know I like them. Um, thanks to Art Echo for sponsoring this giveaway. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.